The tank battle at Cologne Cathedral, although brief, is perhaps the most famous of all time. The Germans had been driven out of France, and the Battle of the Bulge had depleted the majority of their reserves. The British and Americans were closing in on the Rhine. But getting to the Rhine was only the beginning, crossing it was an entirely different story. Before the outbreak of the Second World War, Cologne was the fourth largest city in Germany, and the largest city on the River Rhine, with a population of approximately 800,000 people. The city was established during the Roman Empire, and was built on both sides of the Rhine. The oldest section was on the river's west bank, highlighted by the Roman Catholic Cologne Cathedral. At the time, the cathedral's completion signified the union of many individual kingdoms, and the architecture was a work of national significance, that symbolized Germany's unification. Behind the cathedral, is a railroad bridge, that had to be kept out of Allied control, because the Germans were establishing a defensive perimeter, by using the river as the actual line of defense. Allied bombers repeatedly bombed Cologne during the war, because it was a major German city, closest to England. The railroad bridge had been destroyed by bombs, by the time the Allies arrived in Cologne, and it was no longer useful to either the Germans, or the Allies. By the beginning of March 1945, most of the city was destroyed, roughly 20,000 people remained in the city. The raids had hit the Cologne Cathedral, but it remained standing, and from a distance, appeared unaffected by the world conflict. Because the cathedral was built of stone, it did not burn down, which was possibly the only thing that saved it. Cologne was an empty shell of a city, except for essential personnel, and a few German troops. The cathedral's resistance to destruction in the midst of the city's devastation, was met with a mixture of shock and awe, by all Germans. On March 6, 1945, there were no Allied forces across the Rhine, though the Remagen Bridge further south would fall into Allied hands the following day. The Germans were retreating as quickly as they could to the Rhine's banks, in order to prevent Allied river crossings. It was pointless to confront the enemy on the west bank of the Rhine, when the Great River Rhine provided maximum protection as a defensive perimeter. Nonetheless, the commander of one German Panther tank refused to leave. Instead, he made his final stand in front of Cologne Cathedral. That day, the US 3rd Armored Division arrived in Cologne. The infantry was supported by two medium Sherman tanks, as they advanced toward the river and the cathedral. Because there was too much debris on the streets, they came to a halt, not far from the cathedral. The Shermans got stuck in a narrow street, which made them an easy target for the German tank. Panther tanks were heavier and tougher than the Shermans. Two of the Panther's 75mm shells hit the turret of the leading Sherman, destroying it, and killing or injuring several of its soldiers. The other Sherman realized it couldn't compete with the German tank, and retreated. The Americans, on the other hand, had a newer tank, the T-26 Pershing. The T-26 was an exceptional, and extremely rare tank. It was the pinnacle of American tank development during World War II. The Pershing was controversial, the subject of a three-year bureaucratic squabble, over whether the US Army needed a heavy tank, or if Sherman's and tank destroyers would suffice. By 1944, however, it was clear that German tanks outclassed the fast but lightly armored Shermans. 
In contrast, the experimental Pershing had a lower profile, 105mm of frontal armor, and a massive 90mm gun. The Pershing was far superior to the Sherman, and was on par with any tank in the world. The fact that there was one T-26 Pershing in Cologne, let alone just a few streets away, was a stroke of luck for the advancing Americans. The Sherman crew waited, after calling it for assistance. The Pershing was driving down a street, parallel to the Panther. When it reached an intersection, it paused briefly, took aim when it saw the Panther, and then resumed its path, moving slightly further into the intersection. The Germans had never seen an American tank, like the one that was approaching them. It wasn't a Sherman, either. Was it one of their own? They were confused, and they made a critical error, they hesitated. Clarence Smoyer, a 21-year-old tank gunner, was inside the Pershing. He immediately noticed the German muzzle aimed at the Americans. Normally, a tank would come to a halt, so the gunner could stabilize his gun, but Smoyer didn't have that luxury. He fired on the move, catching everyone off guard. He'd scored a direct hit, but Smoyer didn't realize it at first. He fired once more. But he wasn't sure if the Panther was permanently disabled. Smoyer fired one last time. Throughout these events, an army photographer had his movie camera rolling. One can only imagine the Pershing crew's reaction when they saw the Panther waiting for them, ready to fire with the gun pointed directly at the Pershing. Why did the Panther pause and not fire right away? It had enough time, if only a fraction of a second, to destroy the American tank. It could have been due to the gun crew's confusion. At first glance, the Pershing looked remarkably similar to another German tank. A frequently asked question is why the German Panther remained stationary in that exact location, patiently waiting for the Americans. Some have described it as a last stand type of effort, which was common as the war was coming to an end. The Panther crew could easily have retreated across the river, but they chose to stay and fight. Not for a military victory or a military defeat, but to defend the Cologne Cathedral, the symbol of Germany. The reports on the event had dominated the headlines of the world press for days. By March 7, the Allies had captured all of Cologne, west of the Rhine. The boroughs on the right bank remained under German control, until mid-April 1945. If you have liked the story of this incredible tank battle, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.